Last year, I bought a Yema Rallygraph, a watch that I ended up absolutely loving, loved wearing, and I really enjoyed. And since buying that watch, and owning that watch, I knew I wanted to buy another Yema. And I knew I wanted the Navigraph because there was something rather special about it. And finally, I've been able to get my hands on one. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. And today, I'm talking about a Yema Navigraph, a watch that I've been looking for for ages. But I really wanted to find one at the right price point for me. Obviously, I finally found one. I was able to find one on the used market at a really good price, but still in really good condition. And I'm really excited about sharing it with you today because it is a watch that I've wanted to own for such a long time. So in a first impressions style video, let's flip the camera around and check out this Navigraph. So having wanted the Yamaha Navigraph heritage for so long, I was a little bit unsure if my expectations were going to be a little bit high or if it was going to be exactly what I wanted. Now, it comes in this sort of standard uh, Yamaha casing, which is quite cool, bit of a uh, brochure thing there, and of course the watch. And when I first pulled it out of that, and when it first arrived on my doorstep, I have to say there was probably five things that stood out to me straight away. The first one being something which is good to know is that I really like it. I really like it even more than I was expecting. So that's a very good first step in regards to having this watch. The next thing that stood out to me was those yellow hands. And I kind of expected that, but they really do pop out. It's a really nice bright yellow. And I was a little bit concerned, to be honest, to be worrying about it maybe contrasting a little bit strangely with the other colors that are on the dial, that sort of faux teen are at the indices there. But I think it actually really works really well. It really adds some character to this watch, certainly adds legibility as well. But the third thing that stood out to me was something that I was not really expecting, and that was these female end lugs, which I do like female end lugs or female end links. They're really good, but they don't quite work like female end links normally do. They're sort of more like a male end link. Now, for me, it doesn't cause me any concerns when actually wearing the watch, but it's certainly something to be aware of because this is not a particularly large watch. I think it's a 39 millimeter case diameter, so you would sort of think more sort of medium or even smaller wrists could get away with this watch. But with that issue, it's perfectly fine on my sort of medium wrist, but if you have a much smaller wrist, then this may cause a bit of a concern for you, and I'll show you in a minute when I put this watch on. Now, the fourth thing that stood out to me is the bezel. It's a really nice bezel action. It sort of looks good, absolutely no play whatsoever, but it's a 90-click bezel, which I think is really odd. I don't understand why any company would choose 90 clicks over 120 or even 60, it's just, a, it's just a weird sort of thing. So you can't even line it up specifically on one of those markers. It's a little bit odd, but that aside, really nice action, really firm, has a slightly muted sort of sound and feel to it, but yeah, really nice action. Now the fifth thing that stood out to me and the final thing that really stood out to me was the movement inside this watch. This is an in-house movement, which is really surprising for a watch price at this sort of um, price range. But obviously we've got a screw down crown because this is a dive watch. I think it has 300 meters of water resistance, hand widening, which is fantastic. But it has a ghost position, which really did surprise me. I wasn't expecting that from this watch. Being a uh, no date variant with this sort of style of watch, Having a ghost position isn't really sort of surprising. And I can definitely feel that there is a date window in there. And even as you move the time around past the 12, you can hear it clicking past. But it does have hacking as well though, so that is a good feature. But those things aside, it is just a really good looking watch. Everything's printed on the dial. You sort of got that sort of faux tennis sort of styles at the indices, but then the white uh, minute track there, which I quite like, all the typing on there is white and is all printed. As I've already mentioned, those yellow hands really do pop. The whole case is brushed. Everything's nice and brushed. It's actually quite a nice brushing. That bezel sits quite high. It gives me a sort of vintage bit of a style to it. You know, this is a sort of a vintage inspired watch and that's the sort of the sort of feeling that I do get from it. Uh, drilled end links, which is not really my favorite for watches, but that's okay, it comes with that. Um, the bracelet is really nice. It has quite a sort of almost slightly delicate feel to it, but it is all solid, solid end links, fits well does have that sort of uh, curvature to it that, that I mentioned earlier, and you'll see a little bit more later when I um, put it on wrist. Um, it has a good little clasp on there, uh, four levels of micro-adjust, it was certainly easy to get a good fit for me. Friction lock, 
uh, internally milled there. It has a really nice sort of diver's extension. Not that I would use a diver's extension, but it's a nice fully milled diver's extension, which looks and feels quite nice when you open it up. And it has that sort of Yemo shield on the case back there, which I do like. And that was the same thing that was on my rally graph. On my wrist, on my six and three quarter, around about 17 centimeter wrist, it really sort of fits nicely. But you'll see there that those end links there, they do curve out and around a little bit, which is perfectly fine for my wrist. In fact, it feels like it's almost the perfect size for me. But if you've got a smaller wrist, like six and a half inches or even a little bit smaller, this may cause you concerns. You, you could probably get away with it with six and a half, but if you've got smaller wrists than that, I'd be a little bit concerned about that one. But it's sort of six and three quarters, or if you've got a slightly bigger wrist, not an issue whatsoever. You will see though, because of the sort of case design, it is fairly flat, it does sort of hover up a fair bit, but you're not looking at your watch like that generally, you're looking like this and this way, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really impressed by this watch so far. I'm really looking forward to wearing it long-term. And if you like this first impression style video, maybe check these on out next.